So one may say that, okay, you have, uh, you know, you may glorify a person who is a devotee of Krishna, but there are so many non-devotees of, uh, non of Krishna. There are so many people who are atheists also, who have so many good qualities. There are many people like that also. So why you are talking only about devotees of Krishna? Just like uh, once I was uh, doing book distribution, when I was uh, still a, uh, you know, folk boy. At, the, at those days, we did not have folk and all. <laughs> all of us were congregation devotees. So, I was a congregation devotee and I was doing book distribution. You know, December, January, di book distribution marathon. I, I used to be working at that time. Just passed out of college, started working. Uh, so, naturally, enthusiastically, I took all the books. And uh, when I went for work, I took the books with me to the office. And during lunch time, when everybody breaks for lunch, everybody is free for half an hour, 45 minutes. I, you know, started talking to different uh, colleagues of mine, encouraging them to take the books. Lot of them took the books also. All of them were very nice and appreciative and all that. One of them came to me, he selected a few books, he took a few books also from me. Then he said, that as far as I am concerned, actually this spirituality and all is not essential. There are so many people who are atheists, they are also living. They are also earning money, they are also having successful careers, and they are also living, they are also leading a happy life. And there are people who are, who have devotion, who have faith in God, who are thieves, they also are able to lead a good life. So it is there both ways. As far as I am concerned, I am a theist, I believe in God, that's why I am taking all these books. But this is my opinion, that, that uh, a, a, a person, uh, a, a spirituality or belief in God is not an essential thing, still people Either way, you can uh, have a normal life. So people have this kind of approach that, okay, devotees may have good qualities. All right, we agree. But atheists also have good qualities. They also have good qualities. They also have uh, are charitable. They, they give their wealth for so many good causes. They help others. They don't harm other people. All these kind of things we see even amongst uh, atheists also, isn't it? So for that, the Bhagavatam is saying, Hara vabhaktasya kuto mahat guna. Where are any good qualities in a non-devotee of Krishna? In other words, forget about atheists. Even if you are a theist, but you are not devotee of Krishna, you are a devotee of some devata. You are a devotee of Lord Shiva, you are a devotee of uh, Ganesha, you are a devotee of Surya, you are a devotee of Indra or whatever. You may be a devotee of any of these devatas. Even if you are a, uh, even if you are a, uh, if you are a theist, but you are not a devotee of Krishna, there can be no good quality in you. Forget about atheist. Atheist is very far away. So somebody may say, "Hey, why are you saying this? How can you say this? I am a devotee of Lord Shiva. I am a devotee of Ganesha. I have, you know, I am. How can you say that I don't have any good quality?" So the Bhagavatam is saying, Mano rathe nasato dhavato bahihi. Such people cannot, any person who is not a devotee of Krishna cannot possess any good qualities because Mano rathe nasati dhavato bahihi. Because the mind of such a person is constantly running behind the various concoctions for sense gratification created in the fertile ground of the mind itself. So, Mano Rathena, they are sitting on the Ratha of the mind, they are sitting on the chariot of the mind, Asato, which is uh, their greatest enemy, Dhavato Bahihi, and that chariot is running helter-skelter, taking them in whatever direction it wants, and the people are also running behind all those concocted desires of the mind. As long as people are running after sense gratification, they cannot possess any good qualities. Because whatever good quality you have, you may possess, that will all be temporarily, temporary. Eventually, their desires for sense gratification concocted by the chariot of the mind will definitely take away. It will capture the, 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 all the, uh, you know, our intelligence and it will make us engage in all kinds of sinful activities in order to gratify the senses. This is the reality. And so therefore, as long as one is sitting on that chariot of the mind and running around, eventually one will fall down.
You see what happened with Chanda Kochar. You see what happened with Chitra Ramakrishna. Like that, so many people are there. You look at uh, what happened to Vijay Malya, what happened to Lalit Modi, all successful businessmen. Billions of do dollars business, empires they were heading. Not s small people. And they would have done a lot of hard work, a lot of tapasya they would have taken to build up their empires. It doesn't come uh, simply like that. It doesn't uh, come overnight. Oh, years and years, decades together, they put up all their efforts and built up with their acumen and with their abilities. They built up such a vast empire. And surely they would have been doing charity, helping other people. So many good things they would have done in their life. But eventually what happened? Their greed overtook them and they all went, had to have a fall. This is the nature of this material world. Temporarily, a person, we may prop up saying that, oh, look, he is so successful and all that. But eventually the person will fall down. Because in the current day world, everything is focused on what is the material achievement that the person has, has uh, got to his credit. Based on the material achievement, he is glorified and propped up. Nobody talks about the personal qualities and characteristics of the person. Now you compare the glorification of the great devotees of the Supreme Lord, which is done in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Such wonderful character, whether it is Parikshit Maharaj, whether it is Sukadeva Goswami, whether it is Vyasadeva, Narada Muni, Dhruva Maharaj, such people of such excellent character, not a single blemish in their whole life. Look at his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Not a single, even a single blot you can find in his character in his whole life. Not possible. Such is the wonderful character of the devotees of Krishna. You cannot find even one black spot in their whole, uh, in their whole character, in their whole history. Not possible. So this is the uh, wonderful nature of uh, devotees of Krishna. So if we also become akinchana bhaktas, if we become akinchana bhakta, unmotivated, uninterrupted, uninterrupted devotional service to Krishna, we start doing, then our character also will become uh, like that of the wonderful personalities described in the Bhagavatam, spotless, blemishless. Why? Because Krishna is, as described in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita by Arjuna, Krishna is Pavitram Paramam Bhavan. Krishna is the purest personality. You cannot find anything purer than Krishna. There is no contamination possible in Krishna. Krishna is the purest person. Paramam, Pavitram, Paramam, Parama Pavitra, Krishna is. So anybody comes in touch with Krishna, they also become Pavitra, they become purified completely. Anybody who comes in touch with a pure devotee of Krishna also becomes completely pure. This is the, uh, this is the purifying nature of association with Krishna. The same thing cannot be said about other devatas. Just by coming in touch or becoming a devotee of a devata, not necessary that one will develop all good qualities. You look at uh, Ravana, great devotee of Lord Shiva. Look at Banasura, again a great devotee of Lord Shiva. Look at uh, Hiranyakashipu, great devotee of Brahmaji. But uh, what is their character? Could they, could they uh, assimilate the wonderful character of Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma and become pure devotees themselves? Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma are exalted pure devotees of Krishna, but they could not become. But the, if one comes somehow or another, comes in touch with an akinchana uttamadikari bhakta like Srila Prabhupada, then one will without fail become purified and one will also become of spotless and blemishless character.